this is it. The final induction for Game Show Garbage as a regular series. It's been a great six years going through what has been called the worst in all of game shows. And it's kind of weird to be going out on a show that was voted the worst game show 2014-2015. But a lot of people say it's not a game show because it's a reality show. Well, with the concept of a game show being so widespread nowadays, anything that has a premise of a game or a game theory is usually considered a game show. Like Big Brother, Survivor, The, Ama the Amazing Race, even though that technically is a game show. Anything like that is now considered a game show. So this show has all of the worst elements of game shows, especially from Strike It Rich in the 1950s, and they just made it out to look like a 2015 style reality show. Well, this is it. The 2014-2015 Patrick Wayne Award winner for television, The Briefcase. Uh, I just give up. I With this type of show, I'd rather be doing anything else. Hell, uh, I'd rather be playing Mega Man or, hell, you know what? I know I got some of the worst games ever in here. I'd rather be playing Friday the 13th. That's a bad game. Um, I have bad movies out in the front room. Um, Gary, what are some of the really bad movies that we have? Uh, we have Batman and Robin, right? Yeah. We have Batman and Robin. I have DVDs from WCW in 1999. Surely that's horrible to watch. Uh, we have TNA. Anything from TNA will do. I mean, I'd rather be doing anything else than covering this. I really would. But, let's just plow through it. First off, I apologize for the video. There isn't any torrents and the only videos I could get are from YouTubers who condensed the video and put a border on it to avoid copyright. Anyway, the intro lays it all out for you. It's the exploitation of the middle class and the poor by giving them a life changing sum of money and then telling them that they can keep all of it, give some of it away, or give it all away to another family and vice versa. The major kicker and why a lot of people find it disgusting is that it also exploit those from different walks of life. As you see in the intro, one episode as the typical stereotypical Republican Christian Texans who get paired up with a black inner city lesbian couple as shown in the intro. It's just ill conceived in every single way. And to be honest, the entirety of each episode is insufferable. Beginning of each show has the producers of the show arrive to each family's door and give them the titular briefcase worth $101,000 in it. The first half of this is gratefulness from the family that their prayers or wishes have been answered and that they could do some good with this money. Then the producers pull on the choke chain of reality and tell them that the rules are this. They must spend $1,000 of the money right now and they decide what to do with the rest of the money. And with the information that they'll get over a phone and various other means, said whether to spend all of it or some of the money or give all of it away to the other family. The middle of the episode is all the angst and filler that you would find from an exploitative garbage show like this. We sit through 20 or so minutes of phone messages and interviews with the families going to each other's house and everything like that. While doing so, they get a feel of the other family and their tales of woe and misery and feel bad for them. It's all one vicious cycle of heart-tugging disgustingness. Then the finale shows the two families meeting in one room and telling them what they're going to give the other families yet another hack night to reveal. It's all the tropes of bad reality shows rolled into one. Serious at the start, then you get the feels when the money is given to the other families, and the two families who are worlds apart now go their separate ways and are supposed to be better people through all of this. But I guarantee you this, they go back to their old ways immediately once the cameras stop rolling. I could go on a rant about how this is exploiting the poor, but let's be honest, we all know what it is. But why should I do it when other critics and other pundits have done it better than I could? Yahoo.com writer Ken Tucker scoriates the show calling it, quote, one of the more cynical and repulsive reality shows. The briefcase is all the more reprehensible for passing off its exploitation of people in beleaguered financial status as uplifting, inspirational TV. 
Others have taken a more direct route, such as Times Jason Miller calling it, quote, the worst reality show ever. And to be honest, that's what the show is all about. I would say that this is the worst reality show of the decade so far. Not all time, because you still have the swan, but this is the worst reality show of the decade. If it seemed too quick for you, I kind of apologize, but the show gives me absolutely nothing to work with. Nothing in the sense of original thinking, nothing in the sense of something that is intriguing to grasp onto to make sure you know how bad it is. It's just bad in every single way. It's bad in the most generic way possible. Well, we did go out on a low note, I'm sorry to say, but this is the end of Game Show Garbage as a whole. Well, as a regular series, of course, I should mention that, as the end of a regular thing. And there's some people I want to thank. Uh, first of all, I want to thank my Dumb Answer of the Week correspondent, Jim Williams, who has been with me there on the site since the beginning. Uh, then there's our Grand Poobah, the webmaster, Carl Schneer. Various correspondents over the past. Uh, once is Acosta, our mediocre music TV correspondent. Kyle Joyner, our short-lived video game garbage correspondent. Raymond Gallant, who is our Toon Crap correspondent, and that will continue, by the way, on the site. Toon Crap will continue. I also want to thank some of the people that have collaborated with me in the past. Uh, Brian Zane from Wrestling With Regret. Seth Draken from Monster Crap. Hardcore Kid, uh, who's still f floating around there via social media. He just doesn't produce much stuff anymore. Uh, Kim Justice, I want to thank big time Jessica Brand, Juan Espelana. And there are a couple of people who you hardly saw on camera but deserve a lot of credit. And that's, those are the people behind the camera. My brother Garrett Seidelman and Abby McMillan who without them and my lack of setting up a shot and camera knowledge and giving me the direction, this would look a lot worse than it actually does. But most of all I want to thank you the fans. I mean, without you, I probably wouldn't be doing this at all. Thank you very much. Thank you for being there. And I think I'm going to go play some Mega Man and probably finish up the games of 90. Bye bye! <laughs>